I saw these thick beam lasers on Banggood and thought I'd buy a couple to try them out. I've got one of the green ones and one of the red ones. And the idea of these is that instead of um, being like the typical small laser dial projects a very sharp point of light, these ones actually specifically put out a very thick beam and it's quite a nice effect. It looks, in a dark room with a bit of haze, it looks like a neon tube floating in the air, so it's quite a nice effect. So um, I got the red and green one and the green one's pretty good. Um, it's alignment's okay. These things, uh, basically speaking, have the laser diode and a collimating lens to actually create the thicker beam. If you were to take it out on its own, and I'll take this uh, module out, noting that uh, not only is it a bit vulnerable when you expose the end, but also you have to be cautious about uh, infrared energy from this particular type coming out at random angles, uh, but noting that uh, and before it's been collimated, it's quite a large spread, it's quite a splash of light uh, comes out of these. And once it's uh, been put through the collimating lens, that gathers the light together and focuses it into a more coherent beam. And that, uh, in this case, the lens has been optimised to give that nice thick beam. And say, for instance, from here to one of the walls, so actually out there, see, it looks... From this distance, I'd say about um, 15, 20 feet, uh, say about one to about four metres. Uh, it's producing what I'd guess is about a 25 millimetre dot from that distance, and it's quite bright. It's not perfectly even. There is a distinctive sort of bias in it, but it's really not too bad, and it's certainly not as bad as the red one. So these things are operating at... Uh, this one's operated about 3.8 volts, and it's got a little inline current uh, regulator. The current for the green one is 323 milliamps. Now, if I nudge the voltage up, the current is just staying absolutely constant. It's not going down, suggesting it's not, uh, it's not a switching regulator as such. It's actually just going to dissipate this as heat, probably. So uh, let's uh, swap over, and we'll go to the red laser. Now, when I was young, I can remember when lasers first appeared. Yes, I'm that old. It doesn't seem all that long ago, but it is. And they appeared in t Tomorrow's World. And the first laser, it was like, it just been a concept up to that point. It hadn't ever been proven. And the first laser was the xenon-pumped ruby rod laser, which was basically a, a rod of ruby with a mirror on one end and semi-mirrored at the other. And it lit, was had a spiral xenon discharge tube and it pulsed. And I can remember them showing... On Tomorrow's World, which was just a great British science science programme. It was just a, it was a live programme. It was fantastic. It, it was just a really great, you know, BBC programme. And they showed that, and you could see when they turned the studio lights down, you could see the wee red dot flashing at any distance. And it was just, that was the first time we'd ever seen a laser. And now, of course, lasers, you can buy two for a dollar. Or for two dollars, you get ten lasers, all inclusive of shipping. It's ridiculous now. Uh, these little semiconductor lasers, particularly the red ones. And they just, basically, it's like an LED that's been optimised. In this case, the drive circuitry is just a resistor to limit the current. Then the LED laser diode is a, a lasing diode fabricated in the form of an LED, a lasing cavity, should I say, with the mirror at one end and the semi-mirror at the other. And it's pretty much just like a traditional laser, except the light is of generated in situ by solid state means. It's just a very cheap way of making a laser. So that's what they've done here. And this is uh, the other one. It's not so great. You can actually see the problem here that it's very lopsided. It's got a big hot spot at one side and it's dark at the other. And if I fire it across the room from the same distance, roughly the same sort of dot, but it looks like a crescent moon. It's just that tiny little segment of red at one side. And if... Uh, we open this one up, we can see that with the red lasers, they put out, because of the, the fact it's a sort of basically a flat lasing cavity, it tends to put out a sort of flat section of the laser energy with a concentrate in the middle, but it fans out to the side. And the point of the collimating lens is that it then brings that back, it sort of lines that up and it um, collimates it down into a nice tight beam. Except on this one, uh, let's uh, I printed this off earlier on, I actually took a photo of it and enhanced it a little bit. It's really badly aligned in here. The, the 
s s gooped the module in here. And if this is the circle that would be the perfect output for this to go through that collimating lens, it's the point that you're wanting the maximum energy in the middle here is just way off. I mean, it's not super way off in the sense that, you know, uh, it doesn't take much to actually put it that distance off, but it's very clear that this isn't exactly what you'd call a, a first quality unit from the factory, which, uh, you know, it cost £7.50, which just isn't too dramatic, but it's still disappointing that they've put something out that's so badly aligned like this. So the result is that the area that's been collimated, instead of being uh, a nice bright area, it's actually collimating it, uh, just, uh, it's just catching an edge, and that is manifesting itself as that very lopsided beam. And it's a shame because the all the energy is there, it's just kind of concentrated to one side and it's just not going to uh, come out. Um, you know, you've lost half the energy, basically, at least half the energy from the laser, which is a shame, really. And I'm not sure how easy it would be to uh, depot that and line it up again. But anyway, let's take a look at the circuits, the actual regulating circuits. They are different, uh, so we'll slit them both open and take a look at them. And as I say, I don't think they're traditional switching regulators, current regulators. I can see a little potentiometer there, which I may have actually just ripped up a wee bit, not to worry. With the first green lasers, people got the laser pointers and then hacked them, but by hacking them they weren't doing it in a great way, they were basically just adjusting the power output up and some people just got a bit greedy and then killed their laser pointers. That's back when laser pointers were very expensive. My first green laser pointer cost £250. Ow! From, I think that was from China as well. Then the price really tumbled. Now you can get them for 10 bucks or something like that, if that. They've really crashed in price. So I'm making a real dog's dinner of this, maybe because I don't want to do any more damage, because I think I have knacked that potentiometer. Little preset. Yeah, this looks like probably something like a LM317-ish type device. It looks like a variable regulator. There's uh, two of these components. I wonder if they're just in parallel. Can I read the number? Oh, it's a uh, long ways. P57? Hmm. What about this one? Unless this, this actually, you know, this could just be discrete diodes. Uh, this one actually says 7330. Could that be a 330 milliamp regulator? Not sure. And then there's just a few support components. Uh, it could just be a discrete transistor regulator. Let's take a look at the other one. I think I'll uh, take the knife and just shimmy it along the edge of the board this time. That strikes me as being a much better way of getting these open. I should be cutting towards myself, shouldn't I, for absolute maximum effect. It's like when Mike's electric stuff, he gets his wee scalpel out and starts, like, stabbing stuff in the vicinity of his fingers. It's, it's like, oh, no. So what we got here? Oh, we've got a chip. We've got a chip. We've got a little potentiometer here. We've got a little... Is that a transistor? Is that a regulator? The 8-pin chip is an LM358 op-amp. That's an op amp, isn't it? The LM358? D882 is the transistor type device, and then just generic diodes. <laughs> to all intents and purposes, I think these are just simple current regulators. They're designed to operate at fairly low voltage. The, their spec says something like about 3.8 volts, you know, a lithium cellish type voltage. So if you were operating at those voltages, the the current involved in the voltage drop isn't that dramatic, so they're going to be able to dissipate that heat. Uh, I was kind of originally thinking it might be a little switching power supply, but I guess 
maybe the uh, the diodes and these the lasers just prefer uh, a, a resistive effect, a sort of linear current regulator as opposed to a pulsed one. I suppose they would actually, because the current actually affects the lasing. But yes, you know, it's a nice effect. I like the green one. Not overly thrilled at the red one because it's so out of alignment, though. That's kind of disappointing. But then uh, that's just what sometimes happens. And, well, you know, if you want one of these lasers, you know what to expect. You might end up with something similar. But yes, interesting enough. <laughs>